So we have now seen how to address these devices using the screws. But what if there's ever more than six? Well, in this case, we don't use the S command, but SB, as in right batch. S you already know, and now we're using SB. But what is this device hash that is needed here? Well, that's the type of the device. Make sure that you don't confuse uh, kits and structures. The kit is used to build one of these light types, and those are then the structures. And this is the type that we have built. This is the type that's on the floor. And here we can see the device hash. So you can already guess what this will do, right? You guessed correctly. Uh, if not, then, I don't know, watch the first video again and sit for a few weeks and think and then return to this and realize, ah, okay, it wasn't actually that hard. It was just too small still. <laughs> uh, mm. Instead of writing these cumbersome numbers, which we can copy straight from here, as you've seen, we can also use the name. And these names are always have the same concept. Structure wall light. Structure diode slide. Structure active vent. Not like this though, you see that it's red. But like this, you hash it. This is the concept. Yep, also works. Now instead of writing this every single time, you can also define it once here and then reuse it. This is a name. Using the hash statement it turns into a number and you already know which number that is. Um, this number is now stored in here and I can just use a number like this here. Short and or systematic names are advisable. Anyway, it's still doing the same thing. To be clear, the screws are no longer needed. In this situation, they're useless and now we can address as many devices as we want. Though, this is all of them together. What if you want to address only one of them? Well, then we can make use of the names. Make sure you spell them correctly, including upper and lower case. So it's usually a good idea to just copy them. Control C. And Control V. To address them via type and name, we need yet another command. Not S for the screws directly, or SB for writing to all the devices of the type, but SBN, type name. Hey wait, does this mean that this works just with uh, as a filter? Yes. That's what it means. So think about this when you want to address a row of solar panels and then another row of solar panels which you built uh, in the opposite direction because you wanted to save on cables. This is how you can this is how you can easily make two groups. Now I want to introduce you to the concept of subroutines. See, this is not six commands I've written. Like, turn this on, turn this off, turn this on, turn this off, and turn this on, and turn this off, plus the pause commands in between. No, instead I just wrote, uh, turn the light on, wait, turn it off, wait. Which light? Exactly. So I made a blink function, which waits, and then it says, write batch named, so it writes to all the lights of this type. Uh, and then, well, which name is this? On, one. And then turn it off again. Which name is this? Whichever name I want. Here I used light R, light yellow, and light green. I just wrote them into this little variable here, which is a register. We have 16 of those from R0 to R15. And then I called the subroutine. And then it was just executing that with this value here, whatever value that is, it didn't care. And so, yeah, this is how you can elegantly compress your code. Repetitive things cleaned up. I said there's 16 registers, so not, that's not quite true, there's even 18. But let's only talk about the 16 plus this one. RA is the return address. See, this command jumps to a place. We know that already, for our main loop. 
This one jumps, but before it jumps, it remembers where the computer was, the execution was. And re it remembers that in this register. So I can say JAL, my subroutine, blah, 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 blah. And then I can return to wherever that was, which is here. But let's do something more interesting, something interactive with sensors. Green, yellow, red. Green, yellow, red. Not the most elegant example, but uh, it shows you possibilities. How it works is rather obvious, right? I mean, I had to also define the type for the proximity sensor, and then for each name that I had given them, also the number. Number, 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 number. Doesn't look like a number, but is one. And then, like I said, there's an L command and an S command in, ver in different variations. SBN and SB and S, you already know. Now we see, oh, we have the counterpart L also. Yes, we also have L from D0, from the screw. You have LB to load from all the lights, for example, or LBN to load from all the proximity sensors that have this name. And I'm loading from the proxim proximity sensor uh, whose name is green, where that's activated. And this is being uh, written into register R0. Like I said, when you load or when you r r save, the first thing it wants to know is where does that go? When I say write, it goes into the screw device. When I say load, it goes into the register. But what about this here? Well, see, writing batch is simple. When I say turn all the lights on, I turn all the lights on. But what if I want to know, for example, from a set of doors whether they are open? If all of them are open, it's simple. I will just get a 1. If all of them are closed, it's also simple. I will get a 0. But what if some of them are open and some of them are closed? See, writing batch is easy, but r reading batch is a bit more complex because we have to tell the computer what it is supposed to do with all those potential different numbers. We only have one proximity sensor here, but we have to be prepared for potentially there being more. This command requires it. So we want to say that it either shall add the values up or take the maximum or the minimum or the average. Whenever I don't need anything else, I just go for a sum. This seems purest, and it's very short. See, if I would say, uh, give me um, the activate of all these three sensors. Oh, let's do that. Let's just do that. There, I commented out these lines. So you can just write something in a line, starting with this, or at the end of a line. Then it would be harmless, a comment for you. Anyway, and I said load batch, not load batch named, load batch into R0 from all the proximity sensors on this cable network. And I want to know whether they're currently firing, whether they activated. Um, and here I'm saying maximum. What does that mean? Well, we have three of these sensors here. Uh, the value 0 will be returned if they are not yet green, if I'm not yet close to them. And the value 1, which is the logic statement true, when I'm close enough. So one of them might be activated, the other ones might be de deactivated. So one, zero, zero. And what's the maximum of that? Well, one, of course. The highest value in the set is one. Now, uh, let's, let's see what that looks like. See, only one of them has to fire. The light is green. But if I use minimum, you can guess. Nothing's happening unless all of them are activated. Because it's going for the least value of these. One, zero, zero, one, one, zero. The least value is still zero. And so that's the value written to this thing. Here we can see the name of the proximity sensor. Structure, proximity sensor. Very simple. And here are the logic values. Activate. One, if device is activated, usually means running, otherwise zero. Let's take a look at the active vent. Not at the kit, no, no. We want to program the device that is in the world. What values do we have? Oh, quite a few. Uh, but uh, most interesting to us here is on and mode. Mode 
Outward means out of the pipe network into the room, blowing. And inwards means into the pipe network. And what you're hearing in the background is my weather station uh, uh, telling me through a speaker that a storm is coming. And in a few seconds, yeah. So by now you should be able to guess what this source code looks like, right? Well, here I define the type, structure act event becomes a number via hash and is then written here. Then I've given this thing the name test event with a labeler and here I'm referring to that thing. And then I'm saying pause write batch named to all the events that have this name on one. And here I'm turning them off. And here I am just flipping the mode. So mode is for inward outward. And on off is more well, on off. I'm trying to influence this and I can, but the program will of course always interfere. This value is not being written. So <laughs> uh what's this? I can no longer click here. And I can no longer click here either. Hmm. Well many devices have a lock logic value and I just use this here. I said set the lock to 1. I could also have done this up here outside the main loop because once it's locked it's locked. That's the way it is. Well now this thing is completely locked down. Useless right? No I got the key. Now let me tell you the secret. So you know L S, you know, uh, LB and SB, you know, LBN and SBN, but there's also LBNS, which means a load batch named slot. So instead of just saying I want a logic value of this device, I want a logic value of the slot of this device. So I can find out whether there's something in there, something in that disk slot, or whether there's something in the import slot of the arc furnace. Here, the active event. Um, article slots and data disk slot index zero mode so rather clear once you know what you're looking for this is not just some cryptic mumbo jumbo but now it's telling you something the logic values and here the logic slots and off slot zero I asked whether it is occupied I could also, could also have asked other things in the arc furnace for example what's the max quantity it would have been 50 because the stack max size is 50 or how many are still in there? Well, it's counting down since it's smelting that, so yeah, you have seen that in action already in the first video. Oh, big deal. What is he showing us now? Branching. See, besides J for unconditional jumping to a place, or jumping to whatever's written in register RA, as in return address, um, you can also branch. What does that mean? I'm jumping from here to here, but only under certain circumstances. And the circumstance that I'm looking for is if R0 is not equal to 0. Not equal, NE, to 0. Or instead of this, you can also, I mean, keep it simple, um, you can also write this. Not equal, R0, this. Here's the description. Branch to line C if A is not equal to B. A, B, C. Uh, wait, what? I think I'm confused. <laughs> uh, actually, I don't know. What, what am I doing? Export. Hmm. Yeah, stupid mistake. Like it says here, A, B, C. So branch to C. If A is not equal to B. So we have branch if not equal. Branch if equal. We have branch uh, if greater than. Greater than was uh, greater than zero, for example. We have greater than or equal. We have less than. We have less than or equal. And that's uh, not so complicated. You can look them up here all those commands and it looks like a lot but you have just realized that how many commands are really duplicated in a slight variation so the structure is start the yield 
and we uh, we don't have a main loop here it's uh, it works like this if there is uh, a disk in there if it's not equal to zero you know e occupied if it's occupied one not equal to zero if it's occupied then we turn the vent on and we jump back to start if that is not the case then we will just continue here and we turn the vent off before I leave you alone for today, uh, one last branching command, relative. Very helpful. So, I'm finding out whether the slot of the active vent is occupied. This is now a 1 or a 0 here in this register. And then I'm saying branch equal to 0, relative. Branch relative if equal to 0. So if R0 is equal to 0, then I branch by two lines. In other words, if no disk is in there, I branch by two lines. One, two. So, in the beginning I'm saying this thing is not locked and it shall be pumping into the room. Then I'm saying turn the thing on. And this line here, where I'm saying suck into the pipes, will only be executed if there's a disk in there. See, branch, if re uh, branch relative by two if equal to zero. If it's not equal to zero, as in if occupied is one, if there's a disk in there, then it will not branch. Then we will just arrive here. So let's see. I can flip this freely, but when I insert the disk, the extra line will be executed. You can also branch relative in a negative direction. Not a problem. So you can branch backwards if you wish. See you. Cognition critical. 